Good morning, you guys. <laughs> How is everyone today? Can I make that a little louder? How is everyone today? <laughs> okay, perfect. So, you guys, I am Dominique. I'm a senior here at Valor, and I'm going to talk to you about something that's been on my heart for a while. So, if you guys get moved or anything, you guys are free to shout like amen or hallelujah or like yes, God, if you guys want to. <laughs> I give you free reign. But, um, <laughs> Before I get started, I want to ask one quick question. So how many of you guys have ever had a time where you felt lost in your faith, not knowing if you should trust God or you felt like God has done anything to you? If you've ever felt that, please raise your hand. Okay, perfect. I'm talking to the right audience. So I have had that to me, and... I'm going to be talking about the lost get found. And when I'm talking about the lost, I'm not saying just about getting lost in a parking lot or in the airport or anything else like that, but actually getting lost in your faith. And so one thing we've been talking about is identity lately. And if you have asked me two years ago, my identity was lacrosse, basically. My, I was a lacrosse player. I lived lacrosse, breathed lacrosse, eat lacrosse, and I was going to... I was pursued to go to a college for, to play lacrosse and basically major in lacrosse. And so um, my freshman year coming into Valor, I was on the lacrosse team and I was very confident that I was going to do well. And the first game of the season, I tore my PCL against Columbine. And if you guys don't know what PCL is, it's right behind the ACL. And that was kind of a shocker to me. And throughout my life, I just believe that if I did good things, God will reward me. If I didn't do good things, God will punish me. And so tearing my PCL, I realized that I can live without it. So currently, I don't have a PCL on my left leg. But I just played through and I said, okay, God, you gave me this challenge. Okay, I must have done something wrong. Maybe I'll just work harder to play good lacrosse this season. I will get good grades. I'll go from a 3-2 to maybe a 3-7. And I'll just be more active in the community maybe. Maybe that will please God. And so I went through the freshman season. I worked really hard. Um, I thought I was pleasing God. And I came my sophomore year. And that was when I was like, Lacrosse season is going to be amazing. I had a bunch of colleges set up for me. They said that I had to wait until they wanted to see the game film of me my spring season and then want me to come over during the summertime. And so my parents, my first game of the season against Columbine, you guys are going to learn that I have a huge feud against Columbine. <laughs> but um, first game of the season against Columbine, I was ready. My parents were there. They were filming. I said, this is going to be the game. First minute... I got the draw, ran it all the way down, scored. Split second, I tore my ACL, just like that. And when I say like this, I feel like God just snapped his fingers and I went down. And for the longest, I was shocked because I was wondering what did I do wrong that I just tore my ACL. And I remember I was shocked for 20 minutes. I went to the sidelines and it wasn't until my dad came that I just started bawling. And I'm not sure if you guys have ever had an injury, but an ACL tear is one of the worst. <laughs> it basically stinks. And that's when I really got lost in my faith where I didn't know why I was being punished for tearing my ACL. And I just thought that God didn't like me. God maybe liked someone else, but just not me. And so from there, I just decided, well, I'm not a lacrosse player anymore. I can't play lacrosse, so who am I as a person? And so going to God for saying, like, maybe help me guide, I, was, I just thought, I'm just going to do my own thing. And so throughout this period, I was very lonely, and I truly didn't know what to do. I kind of hung out with the wrong people and did a lot of things I regret. And it was hard for me to figure out who I was as a person without the one thing that I identified myself as. Has anyone caught my drift? And so I had to kind of learn to gain my faith, but it took a long time because I just thought God is punishing me. He doesn't like me, and so I don't like him. When I was, if I was sitting in chapel right now and someone told me about faith in Christ, I said, nope, can't do it. He doesn't like me. And it took a while for me to actually learn that an experience like this, when God takes something away from you, it's not to punish you, but it's a test. 
And most students think that like teachers are worse with tests and they just give it out. Like God, he gives us tests all the time. And so I had to learn through that journey. And luckily I had friends that helped me realize that I was lost. I was lost. I didn't know what I wanted to be. I didn't know what college I was going to go to. While I was learning how to walk again, all my friends were being recruited to major lacrosse schools. And it wasn't me. I decided to maybe, I didn't know what to do truly. I thought, okay, I don't have lacrosse. Maybe I'll start checking out boys. And then I was like, boys don't like me, so it's okay. (laughs) And then I said, maybe I weigh too much. And so I lost a lot of weight by not eating. And then I realized I'm skinny. I don't like this. I need to eat more. (laughs) But um, it was a rough time. And so a lot of friends helped me through this process. And I started venturing out. Um, Without lacrosse, I came into Valor. I was thinking maybe I can try being an engineer. I took a um, coding class my first week and dropped out because I realized I don't like coding. I should not be an engineer because I can't do it, don't like it. And I joined a business course. And through that business course, I realized that I really enjoy business. And I was also in economics, and so I decided, why not join a couple courses? And so I joined some business courses um, here at Valor. I joined the business club and the economics club, which might sound nerdy, but it's very cool, I promise. <laughs> but, um, and I decided to diversify myself, and that's when I realized that God took one thing away from me to realize who I really was. I thought lacrosse, that's my main goal, and then I realized that I am much more than just a lacrosse player. I am more than just a person that just runs down the field, catches the ball and scores, that I actually love business. I love economics. I love to learn. I love to serve my community. And so through this process, I um, figured out what was truly, what truly means to be lost and to get found. And I just want to talk to you guys today because I know that everyone has had a time where they have been lost. I'm not sure if it's a time where maybe your money was taken away and you don't know how to pay for anything, or your grades are slipping. Maybe it's a sport that you might get injured, or maybe someone really close has been having struggles or might have just passed away. There's times in everyone's life where they are lost in what their identity is or what they're supposed to be doing. And so let me get back over here. Um, one thing that helped me through this journey is a song actually called The Lost Get Found. And one of the lyrics is, don't let your lights go down, don't let your fire burn out, because somewhere somebody needs a reason to believe. Why don't you rise up now? Don't be afraid to stand out. That's how the lost get found. And so I want to speak to the people that are currently lost in their faith and the people that are currently found. Because it's not a gray area. You're either lost, you don't know if you have a faith or if you believe in God and if God's punishing you or there's some way where you're not true to um, your faith with God or you're found and you know, God, he's my homie, (laughs) we're cool, everything else like that. And so I challenge everyone that if you are lost, it's okay because I went through that experience. Most people have gone through that experience and just know that God is always with you through this and that there might be something going on with your life and that he will help you. And God loves it when people are lost because that's the moment when we can find ourselves and then find our identity through Christ. And then if you're found, praise you, congratulations. Stick with that faith and help someone that may be be lost actually, that might have struggles. And so I wanna walk out with a Bible verse. Um, My favorite parable is the parable of the prodigal son if anyone knows that. And so, um, basically, the parable of the prodigal son, there's two sons, and with the father, one of them left to spend all of his riches and ended up poor. He was lost, came back to his father, and his father rejoiced. And um, Luke 15, 21 to 23 says, the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fan calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. 
For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. God loves when people are lost and they come back. He just loves it. And it's an incredible story. I remember once I found that, found that out, it, I was amazed by it that God gave me a challenge that I thought that I couldn't take and that I could still come back to him. He wants to give us challenges to take something away and see what we'll do with it. And tearing my ACL made me stronger and made me grow in my faith with Christ. And, of course, the son, of course, got upset. The person that is found, who was with the father the whole time, was upset, saying, why glorify someone that is lost uh, when I've been with you the whole time? And he replies in Luke 15, 31, my son, the father said, you're always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So three concepts I want you guys to leave with today are sinners are lost until God finds them. God goes to great effort to seek lost sinners, and God rejoices greatly when lost sinners come to repentance. I just want you guys to think about that for a second. Granted, I don't know how any of you guys are in your faith right now, but it's a struggle. I understand. I know seniors right now, we're deciding where we want to go to college, what we want to major in, and what truly is our identity or our purpose here. Juniors, you just took the, took the ACT, congratulations. It was horrible when I took it, but you guys are done. And you might be thinking, how did I do? <laughs> how did I do in the ACT? Um, how are my scores gonna compare with colleges? Freshmen and sophomores, you guys are going in about to be the upperclassmen, and you're trying to decide what courses to take. What do I wanna do with my life? You know, college, it might be far away, but you guys might have that in the back of your mind. And so we're all having kind of struggles of what we want to do with our life. And so one thing I want everyone to do right now, this might be weird, but I actually want you to repeat after me. And so I'm going to say, I was lost, and you guys are going to say, I was lost. And I'm going to say, now I'm found, and you guys are going to say, now I'm found. We're just going to do that for three times, okay? So, I was lost, now I'm found. I was lost, now I'm found. One more time, I was lost, now I'm found. Once you guys have that moment where you can say that in truth, that will be the best moment ever. So, I just want you guys to come out today and just know that If you need any help with just finding who you are as a person, if you don't know what you're going through, if God is truly with you, just know that you might be lost in your faith, but you can be found. Because God doesn't let anyone go. No matter what challenges he gives you, he doesn't let anyone go. And everyone has friends here that has, there's a support group everywhere. You have the Bible teachers, you have Katie, Tanner, and I, we're all here to help you. And so just take that out today that you can be saved and that no matter what you're going through, there's always an opportunity. So thank you so much.